Okay, so in this video, I want to introduce how we're going to expand upon binomial expansion. Okay, so how are we going to take it that one step further? Now, it might not seem obvious as to what we could really do to extend it, but what we're going to look at is how we can actually figure out what 1 plus x to the n is in an expanded form when n isn't necessarily a whole number. Okay, so what would it mean uh, for this to be 1 plus x to the half? How could I expand that? Now, we know that from whole numbers, when we've got 1 plus x to the 0, or 1 plus x to the 1, or 1 plus x to the 2, or 1 plus x to the 100, we would have a finite number of terms. But when that number n is not a whole number, then what you actually get is an infinite series of terms. And I want to introduce kind of where that comes from in this video. Now, what we're doing here is going to be a little bit above our pay grade. So it's going to be um, a little bit beyond the scope of this course. But it'll be useful for you to be able to know kind of where this thing has actually come from, rather than me just going, right, here's the formula, now let's use it. OK? So um, the irony of this is going to be that I am going to use some other mathematics that I am going to have to pull out of thin air for you, OK? Unless you go away and uh, investigate it, OK? And so the bit out of thin air that I'm going to have to pull is uh, McLaren series. So McLaren series is a special form of the Taylor series. Now, the Taylor series, so we're going to have to take another step back. The Taylor series is a way of expressing a function of x as an infinite series uh, polynomial. So you'd have uh, one term, a linear term, plus a constant term, uh, sorry, uh, a constant term, plus a linear term, plus a quadratic term, plus a cubic term, etc. Okay? So if you had a curve, then you could approximate it about a particular point uh, whatever point you like, using a Taylor series. Now, there are some conditions that come with that, um, because it depends upon the function that you're using. But functions like sine x, or cos x, or e to the x, or ln of x, okay, at particular points are perfectly fine to work with. Um, now, Maclaurin series that is a special case of Taylor series and says, right, we are just going to look at zero and expand the function from there. OK, so that's the one that I really um, want to make sure we look at. So McLaren series, uh, so we're looking at um, about early 18th century kind of mathematics here says that a function of x can be written as f of 0. OK, so that's your linear, your, sorry, your constant term. Keep on making that mistake. Your constant term, OK, plus the first derivative evaluated at 0 times x. So that's your linear term plus the second derivative evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial x squared. So that's your quadratic term. Plus the third derivative evaluated at 0 over 3 factorial x cubed plus an infinite series of terms following on in that manner. So the next one would be the fourth derivative evaluated at 0 over 4 factorial x to the 4. Okay? 
And this is McLaren series. Now, it's really good to investigate McLaren series, um, really just to see kind of how it builds up. So, for example, okay, if you take a function, let's say sine x, okay, you try this out with sine x, make sure you calculate in radians if you try it. So, take sine x and then do sine of zero, okay, so if you plot uh, y equals sine x on a graph plotter, autograph or Desmos, or GeoGebra, and then plot y equals sine of zero, that's your first estimate, then do sine of y equals sine of zero plus cos of zero times x, okay, because first derivative evaluated at zero, okay, so you've now got a straight line plus sorry, a horizontal line, plus now a diagonal line based on that, then add on another term, then add on another term, and progressively you should see these curves build up and start matching the sine curve from zero, okay? It's a really interesting uh, thing to see happen as you just add on progressively more terms and you, st you start to find it approximating the curve. So, we use this on 1 plus x to the n, okay? So, as part of this, I'm going to have to find the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, okay? So, first of all, if I'm writing that as f of x, let's find the first derivative. Now, the first derivative of 1 plus x to the n has got to use the chain rule. OK, so if you haven't met the chain rule for differentiation yet, you should go and make sure you've seen that first. So the n comes down to the front. The derivative of what's inside is 1. That comes out to the front as well. So we just have 1, 1 plus x, and then subtract 1 from the power. OK, now the second derivative, the n minus 1 will come down to the front. The derivative of what's inside comes outside, and then take 1 off the power. The third derivative, the n minus 2 will come down to the front. The derivative of 1 plus x comes outside, take 1 off the power. OK? Then we need to evaluate each of these at 0. So we're going to have f of 0, OK? It's just 1 plus 0 to the n, okay? So, um, what's that? Just 1 to the n, so just 1. Now, f prime of 0, okay? So, substituting x is 0 into this, we're going to get n times 1 to the n minus 1. So, we'll just have n. The second derivative evaluated at 0, so x is 0, we're going to have n times n minus 1 times 1. So n times n minus 1. Third derivative evaluated at 0, we're going to have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times 1. Okay? And you can see that the fourth one evaluated at 0 will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. So then if we substitute these into our expansion, we can say that 1 plus x to the n is equal to f of 0, which is 1, plus f prime of 0, which is n, so nx, plus f double prime, so of 0, so n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared, plus the third derivative evaluated at 0, so n, n minus 1, n minus 2, over 3 factorial, x cubed, plus an infinite number of other terms. And this is the formula that we can now use to expand uh, 1 plus x to the half, 1 minus 3x to the minus 5, OK? And we can write down an infinite series for these expansions. And this is the formula that we'll be using moving forward.